You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drakewing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of After Class. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching my channel, all the new subscribers. I've got plenty more content coming to you down the road. With my new laptop on the way, I'm going to be able to actually push out more content in more timely fashion. And so, yeah, <laughs> expect more videos. But uh, anyway, guys, so we're, we're picking up where we left off. This is strange sleepover, like six guys sleepover. This is very weird. Just uh, Mark invited just a bunch of people to just come stay at Henry's house. Okay. All right. Uh, sure, why not? His house is enormous, but still, a little warning ahead of time would have been... It just, or, you know, just ask. Ask if it's okay. But anyway, guys, let's sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> All right. Huh, okay. Well, let's eat, everyone. Everyone nodded, and all of you ate dinner together. It was full of chatter, and everyone seemed to be having a good time. Oh. <laughs> Whew, that was good. Ha <laughs> ha, you really ate a lot. He told us that he just ate dinner before coming here, too. Hey! <clears throat> I'm second. Ah, gotta get my throat just right. Alright. <clears> ha! <throat> huh, I'm going to the living room. Would you guys mind if I bring Anders and Henry with me? Go ahead. Huh? But but why? Just come with me. Oh. Well, what's up, Mark? We need to give them space. Mr. Stone told me what happened, and it seemed like Gil wanted to talk with that cat over there. You're also a cat, you know that. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> God, got stuck doing that voice. <clears throat> It doesn't matter. My point is, we should let them be. All right. Well, since we're here, I have a question for you, Mark. What is it? Why are we going to the beach? Ah. Yeah, I wanted to ask that, too. Spring isn't the time for the beach. You're just making excuses because you don't like the sea, Anders. Hmm. As for you, Henry, I don't know. The ticket says so. I guess that's fair. You spent your time with Mark and Anders in the living room. Well, the three... Well, those three stayed in the kitchen. You also exchanged numbers with Anders. What a surprise. All right, looks like everyone is ready for bed. I'm sorry, though. I wish I could get you guys mattresses, but I only had these quilts. This is more than enough, really. Yeah, I'm feeling very comfortable right now. Me too. That was because they weren't lying down on the floor. You were you were more worried about Coach Gill and Mr. Parker. Well, sorry you have to sleep on the floor, Coach Gill and Mr. Parker. Ha! <laughs> if you feel so bad, you can let me sleep with you in your bed. <laughs> oh, God. K Coach Gill, please stop. God, just so creepy. Oh, my God, he just oozes sleaze. No offense to you guys if you like Coach Gill. I just... Oh, God, he gives me such predator vibes. <clears throat> I know that's like a recurring theme in anime and manga, but still. Bad idea. Oh, oh every everyone is saying it's a bad idea. Sometimes I can't believe that you're my teacher, Coach. Show some decency, Gil. How about the coach show some fucking decency? What? I was just saying. Well, <laughs> good night, everyone. Right. You headed to the bedroom with Lars. Are you sure it's okay for me to sleep here? Yeah, my bedroom is quite spacious anyway. He sat down on the floor next to the bed. Hey, I want to see your new phone anyway. Huh, oh, oh, uh, about that. Are you sure it's fine for me to use it? Why not? You said that you wanted to get a new phone, but you ended up giving it to me. Yeah, that was a lie. I said that you so you wouldn't get up so that you wouldn't suspect me. Hmm. It's really okay. You need one so I can text or call you when either of us needs it. Oh, also, it's an unlocked phone. Don't know what that means, but I think it's a good one. But I think it's good. Ah, okay. It just means it can work with any phone carrier. I see. Okay. There's a new card in it too, so I'm set. And can I have your number? Yeah, sure thing. You exchanged phone numbers with Lars. At this time, you had all your friends' phone numbers, including Coach Gill and Mr. Parker. After you were done with it, you climbed up the bed and told Lars that you wanted to go to sleep. Lars stood there, not doing anything. Uh, why are you still there? Come here. On the bed? Yeah, I'm not letting you sleep on the floor without something to cover you up. But I can do that just fine. No is no. Just come on. I want, I want to wake up early tomorrow. Okay, don't mind if I do. <laughs> it wasn't until he laid down next to you that you realized it was really embarrassing to have anyone else, to have anyone else sleeping in the same bed as you. Ah, this is so soft. I know, right? You turned around, now facing him, and immediately turned around again because he was too close for you. Mind uh, turning off the light? Sure. Click. 
Thanks, Lars. Don't mention it. I'm excited for tomorrow. It's gonna be my first time going out with my friends. Yeah. He rustled around for a second, and he wondered what he was doing. Apparently, he was shaking. He was taking his shirt off. He remembered that he didn't sleep with his shirt on. He tried not to say anything about it. Ah. What is it? He went quiet for a brief second before he answered you. No, nothing. Everything went quiet suddenly. All you could hear was the sound of crickets distant chirping. A drop of sweat dropped from your forehead onto the bed. Was it really that hot, or was it just you? Let's not think about it. Thanks, Henry. Huh? Well, what do you mean? I managed to meet everyone again. Thanks to you. That's <laughs> nothing. I'm glad everything is sorted out for you. Hmm. We should go to sleep now. Yeah. That was a lie. You wanted to talk more with him, but you couldn't think of anything. You closed your eyes, slowly drifting into sleep. <laughs> Bunch of lovely boys. Day seven. So Coach Gill. Coach Gill's a little weird. Well, he's more than a little bit weird. Mm, heavy. Still half awake and without even bothering to open your eyes, you could feel that there was something weighing on you. Why is it so stuffy in here? Didn't this happen to you some time ago? It was about time to find out what this heavy furry thing on you was, even though your eyes refused to open at first. Hmm. That unknown force was pinning you down tightly without mercy. You couldn't lift your torso, but at least you could still tilt your head to see what it was. You looked over your chest. There was some orangish fur. It wasn't too clear. The sky the sky was still dark out there. Speaking of, what time was it? It didn't matter. He needed to know what that was. Let's see. It was orange, and it had these distinct black stripes. Orange fur with black stripes. Oh, Lars! Oh, I forgot that we share the bed for now. Of course you'd forgotten about it. Typical. Even his arm is enough to crush me. I guess I could try to wiggle myself out of his death grip. Da! Ah! It just dawned on you that he slept facing your face, and now you could finally feel his breath. You flinched as you felt it on your neck. That tickles and feels weird, huh? And apparently it was one of your sensitive spots. You really learn new things every day, huh? I won't be able to go back to sleep if I don't free myself soon. Ah! Inch by inch you wiggled your way out, but he suddenly pulled you up and mumbled, Mmm, please don't go. He nuzzled your neck and did that thing called Mlim before letting you go. That was cute! If only he had your phone with you right now. Ah, not the time to get distracted! He finally let me go by himself, though. I should really go back to sleep before I lose my sleepy. Me? Ah, what now? Hey! I'm awake! You really are hard to wake up. My hands are sore from shaking you back to reality. We're gonna deal with whatever these kids want us to do today, and, and you were here sleeping in. I swear. Wait, where am I? Is this a dream? Oi, are you even listening to me? Huh, oh, uh, what's happening here? Am I being sent to the past? Or is it one of the memories I've forgotten? Earth to Henry! Uh, oh, ah! Herbert, yep. <laughs> Herbert, no, you're not calling me that again. I'm gonna tell Mom. Sorry, brother. That's fine. Go clean yourself and we'll see the others downstairs. Okay. All done. Now I should go to downstairs. What's taking you so long? We're leaving soon. Sorry, I didn't know how to turn on the shower. Jeez, you're so helpless. You should have, you should have asked me. I know, I'm sorry. <sighs> you're fine, silly. Let's go downstairs. Okay. Sorry for taking so long, everyone. Up. Huh? Oh, whoa, I'm shaking. What's wrong? Uh, wake up! Is that... Isn't that Lars' voice? Wake up, Henry! <laughs> dreams within dreams. Oh my god. After classception. <laughs> hmm. Hey, good morning. If you can call that morning. It appeared that Lars was gently shaking your shoulder to wake you up, and it worked. Although you noticed, well, more like smelled something weird. Was it you, or was it something else? Something that smelled good was emanating from Lars, apparently. Was he in the kitchen before waking me up? Is he awake yet, Lars? Oh, uh, how late is it? No, we're still fine, but you have to go wash your face or take a shower now. Your, your choice. I think I'll go take a shower. Thanks for waking me up, Lars. Mm-hmm, don't mention it. I'll go back to the kitchen. He was in the kitchen. Well, thinking about it won't get my body clean, so I need to get up and clean myself before the others start nagging me for it. Especially Mark. Whoa, it's busy here. 
Well, it didn't exactly look busy. In fact, there was only Anders stretching his body and Mark flopped across the couch, but it sure did feel busy. Good morning, Anders. Ah, good morning. I is, is he okay? He pointed at Mark, who resembled a melting pocket watch from the persistence of memory painting. It was something. He's fine. Well, he doesn't look fine to me, but Anders knows him more than I do. Really, he's just not a morning person. Ah, I see. What he, <laughs> what he said. Well, I'm gonna take a shower now. Take your time. Wait, Mark. What? Are we staying for the night? Yeah. <laughs> but we'll be home before dawn. Oh, okay. Anders looked at you and shrugged before he went back to his stretching routine. With that, you headed to the bathroom and took a warm shower. Hmm. Whew, refreshing. Let's pick something to wear and pack some clothes after. Not sure why I'd do that, even. All of my daily wear is just the same thing, except each of them got some palette swaps. Gotta pack some underwear, because I don't want to repeat the same incident. Hey, uh, breakfast is, breakfast is done. Do you want to eat some breakfast before we leave? Ah, well, I didn't know if I can stomach anything this early, though. Hmm, you don't have to if you don't want to. You can always eat the food on your way there. Hmm, I see. I, I think I'll join you guys. Give me a bit. I'll be there. Ah, alrighty. Hmm, what are you doing? Uh, just finishing packing. Oh, you didn't pack last night? No, well, I don't really need that many clothes to begin with, so it wasn't that hard. Okay, then. Well, we'll be waiting in the kitchen. Don't take too long. I won't. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Hmm. Well, whatever it is, that can wait. For now, I should head to the kitchen, or I'll never hear the end of it from Mark. Once you finish packing everything, you put your bag in the living room and head to the kitchen real quick. There he is! Uh... First thing you noticed was Mark leaning against the leaning against the counter, playing on his phone while Mr. Parker did the dishes. Anders, on the other hand, was eating some dried seaweed by the corner. Ah, if you're worried about the chair, don't worry. It's not. I'm not eating breakfast. Just like yesterday, there weren't enough chairs for everyone. But luckily, Anders and Mr. Parker weren't eating their breakfast. At least to you, a measly seaweed sheet didn't count as breakfast. As for Mr. Parker, he was literally doing the dishes. Me neither. I have this seaweed snack, so go ahead and sit down. Is that really enough? Yeah. If you say so. After you got seated, Mark followed and sat across you, next to Coach Gill. So, you're up now? <laughs> pretty much. It was funny to see Mark having his moment this morning, and it was fun while it lasted. I kind of want to see the early morning Mark more often. <laughs> You'll see it a lot if you see it a lot if you hang out with me more often. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. So, did you sleep well with Big Kitty over there? Oh yeah, I slept good. <laughs> Please swallow your food before talking. You say it like I didn't do it. Don't do it all the time, Parker. Yeah, what he said. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's good. What about you, Lars? Did you sleep well? Ah, uh, yeah, it was good. Who was it really? It didn't sound good to me. You got a feeling that Mark was deliberately getting on Lars's nerves. It didn't really work though, since it looked like he was lost in thought. Speak up. Jeez, Mark, would you not antagonize him so? It was really good. It really was good. Right, I'm sorry, big kitty, I'm not quite awake yet. That's okay. Well, things suddenly got awkward. How about you guys, did you sleep well? It was fine. It'd be better if I slept next to you. You rolled your eyes and took a bite of your food. It was fine. I'm used to sleeping on the floor all the time. Something you're used to? What kind of place did you stay in, Anders? No, I can't say that, not in front of everyone. I see. And I'm pretty sure Mr. Stone there slept really great because he was snoring the whole night non-stop. I, I did? Oh, he sure did. I wonder Mark's irritable today. He didn't sleep well at all, it seemed like. Yeah, I require, like, I require white noise in the room if I'm going to go to sleep. Like, I have to have, like, a fan or something. Because if, if I don't, I'm going to, like, be hyper aware of, like, every little, every little fucking noise in the house. And it's going to drive me crazy. Well, since we're done eating and stuff, let's head out as soon as we can. We don't want to miss the bus, do we? What's the rush? We have about 20 minutes before departure, and the bus is, and the bus stop is only five minutes away. Oh, right. You always go for a walk after a meal. Heh, <laughs> you know me. But I think Mr. Stone is right. We should go there early. The earlier the better. That's fine by me. How about the others? No objections. What he said. I'm fine with that. I'm with Lars. Now that we've reached a conclusive decision, let's grab our stuff and head out. 
Everyone started grabbing their things and was ready to go outside, but Mark made sure that everything was taken care of. He also told everyone to check for anything that you might have missed, any lights, not turning off the stove, running tap, running tap water, and so on. Once everything was in the clear, all of you took off for the bus stop near Bublix. Ooh, a little trip. On the way to Bublix, you noticed that Lars wasn't really himself. Since you didn't want to draw attention, you asked him, you asked him, over, you asked him over text. Well, I'm glad I got one, or I wouldn't know how to ask him. Once you pressed send, you looked at him briefly before walking toward the bus stop sign to talk with Anders. Never thought I'd be here with him, and there's practically almost no one here. I suppose you don't have any reason to go out here this early. Yeah, I'm usually still drooling over my pillow around this hour. That's fair. It's a little bit weird. Usually this place is bustling with life. Well, not exactly. This town is not the most crowded place I've ever stayed in. Seeing it like this makes, my ta makes this town feel a little bit lonely. But at the same time, it feels peaceful and makes me appreciate it a bit more. Yeah, I think I know how you feel. Oh, you do? To some extent, yeah. I see. I think that's the end of the conversation. <laughs> you squatted by the bench where you saw Mark being himself. I think I can talk to them to kill off time. Let's see. Check your phone. I like how Coach Gill is just dot dot dot. <laughs> uh, check your phone. Maybe Lars replied. Let's see if I got a new message. Oh yeah, he did, but only said that he's fine. I should talk to him then. Exactly. There was no reason for you to do this anyway. Everyone was busy with their own thing. You approached Lars, who was leaning against Bublix's exterior wall. What's up? Hey, kiddo. Not much. Hey, I'm not a kid. Heh, <laughs> just joking. I've never, had, I've never heard you call me kid, though. What's up with that? Huh? Pretty sure I called you that before. He did. Ah, that's not important right now. Yeah. You've been quiet today. Are you really okay? Yes, I'm okay. Are you sure? I'm really sure. If you say so. Sorry to make you worry, kid. Ah! You don't like it, you don't like it when I call you that. It's fine. No, no, it's fine. I just want you to look at me as an adult, that's all. But I can't tell you, I can't tell you that, can I? I see. I'm glad to hear that then. Hmm. Anything on your mind? Let's see what you on the bus, yeah. Would you like to sit next to me later? Oh yeah, sure. Yay! He patted your head and smiled at you. His hand was, it was shaking? Well, anyway, I'm glad that you're okay. Hmm. But I'm going back now. Talk to you later. Alrighty. You walked back to where you were previously. Huh. I think I can talk to them to kill off time. What's Mark doing on the bench? He's looking like the, he's looking, he's looking like the pocket watch again. I wonder if he's okay. Well, more like a backwards melting po pocket watch when he, because he's lying on his back against the bench. As you approach closer, you notice that he was snoring? Is he sleeping out in the open? You tie, you tapped his left cheek to get his attention. What? Are you seriously sleeping here? No, uh, but what do you want? It almost looks like he has bloodshot eyes. Yeah, he was definitely dozing off. Oh, I'm just curious if you're okay. I appreciate that, but shouldn't you be paying more attention to that big kitty over there? Well, for now, I want to pay attention to this big kitty. Hmm, don't say things, don't say things like that to me. What? But why? <laughs> Stop saying what I want to hear. What? Oh, just a song has been stuck in my head. No, but for real, what do you need? Uh, I already told you what I need. Hmm, I'm okay, thanks for asking. Okay, but why were you looking like the pocket watch from that painting? Painting? What painting? Oh, you and Anders have been weird today. He was sketching something while looking at me earlier and laughed his ass off. Is it weird that I'm sad because I missed him laughing? Please don't change the topic. That one painting where the pocket wa where the where the pocket watches were melting. The persistence of memory? I don't know, but it sounded right. No wonder that bull was laughing. He was mentioning that that it suits me too. It suits you? What does that? What do you mean? It happens that I always carry a pocket watch with me. Huh? Why do you carry it with you? Oh, excuse me, guys. Must you ask everything? No, but I'm curious. That's the same thing. Well, what pocket watch? You're being unusually persistent today. Oh, sorry. You're fine. I'll show you later on, but let me catch some more Z's, will you? Fine. Thanks. Love you. L love you, too. Heh. <laughs> okay. On second thought... Suddenly, Mark sprang to life and hopped off the bench. The bus is here. Let's hop on. That was quite the change. Uh oh, it's already here. Neat. Hey, Gilbert, wait for me. Gil. Eh, uh, you get the point. Hey, if you two are gonna have lovers' quarrels, do it when you're inside, or do it after we got in. You're in the way. Ah, oh, sorry. Wow, he's feisty today. 
<laughs> you don't have to say that to Mr. Stone. He looks so guilty. I think Anders is right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone got in. Only you and Lars remained outside the bus. What are you still waiting for? Come on! Let's go, Lars! Hmm. He still doesn't look too good. I really wonder what's up with him. Upon getting on the bus, you noticed that there was no one else inside. The only group getting on it was you and Co. Well, I wasn't expecting this. It made sense in a way. It was the only start of it was only the start of the semester. Everyone was still busy with their schoolwork. Your group decided to occupy the seats in the back where they were arranged where they were arranged like an old-fashioned train. I'm taking the window seat. Wait, I want the window seat. There's a lot of empty seats. If you want the window seat, you can zip behind you can zip behind me. Yes, Lars to sit together, but for some reason you felt like you needed to ask permission from Mark. I'm gonna sit with Lars. Is that okay? What? What made you feel like you need to ask me? I don't know. Do what you want to do, not what you're not what you're asked to do. Uh, uh, okay. Well, Lars, let's sit. Do you want to sit near the window? I think I'd like that. Okay then. After you. This is exciting. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of After Class. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!